The floodwaters are here, why you need to stay away from them, and bringing the wild side back to life in the cities. We've got another sign of spring if you need it. Niabi Zoo reopening after a long, hard winter, and some new animals have made Coal Valley home. That's just ahead. But first, the rising floodwaters bring with it a rising health concern. Let's be honest, you just don't know where that water's been. And once the river slowly returns to the banks, the problem can still remain. And joining us is Sherry Doom, the Environmental Health Sanitarian for the Rock Island County Health Department. I want to point out that the department sent out a kind of a health advisory this week regarding the floodwaters, mainly saying, don't go in them. Right. I mean, it, it seems like that makes sense, but you know these higher floodwaters is really drawing tourists and is drawing perhaps more people to the river, I'm sorry, who normally would not be there. That's true, but the waters can contain industrial chemicals, uh, chemicals from uh, agricultural fields, plus a whole slew of bacteria and organisms you just don't want to be around. Well, I was going to ask you, I mean, how much different is a flooded Mississippi River than a regular Mississippi River because there are people who spend time in the river, mm -hmm. they jump in. There's a lot of people who would say, I would never even touch that water. How is the flood water a lot different? Well, like I said, uh, you have the chemicals, you have the ag uh, farm stuff. The water comes out of the riverbanks. It uh, washes all that stuff back into the river and it's just not a good environment to be in when it's flooding. Do you also have a number of problems with sanitary systems and sanitary, even personal sanitary uh, uh, sewer systems as well as uh, industrial or municipal ones? Yes, um, most of the infrastructure of cities were designed so that the storm waters go right into the sanitary sewers and when you have big flooding on the, these rivers with uh, uh, the cities on them, there's so much water coming through those storm drains, they have to open the gates. Mm -hmm. And uh, I know they've been trying to change that, but I just don't think the money's there to have it all completed at this time. So you have a lot of sewage coming into the, into the rivers. So what is your main concern? I mean, is it, I, I would assume people will say, oh, I don't have a, a cut on my leg or, or, or anything like that. I can wade in the water, that'd be fine. What do you say to that? Well, you may get cut while you're waiting, and you may get into some chemicals that are in the water that could cause some irritation on the skin. Um, so tetanus, tetanus is a big thing. You may inadvertently uh, swallow or ingest some water, which could have uh, any type of uh, bacteria, the Shigella, E. coli, mm -hmm. Salmonella. Um, and then you got the Hep A virus, you know, and so these are all things that can cause you a lot of uh, discomfort, nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, uh, abdominal pain, muscle ache, fever. Um, it's just stuff uh, you can avoid it, so avoid it. We have heard there are some problems that there has been some contamination of wells. Uh, I know Pleasant Valley, the Red Cross was offering uh, water for Pleasant Valley. I know Campbell's Island has had some problems as well. Is that a long-term problem or do wells naturally clean themselves out or what is the concern as far as the wells are concerned? Yes, um, we, um, whenever you have water over top the well, uh, floodwaters can seep down into the well and it can contaminate it. And so we have steps where we recommend you put a hose out after the water's gone down and just let the water run. Um, start flushing it out, get as much as the contaminants out as you can. Um, for the bacteria that get down in there, you know, you want to get them flushed out, but we can also chlorinate at that point. And so if you have any questions on chlorinating a well, uh, give the health department a call. We have, or check our website. We have uh, literature there on how to disinfect your well. And um, you can also call your well and pump guy. They can come around and give it a good shock chlorination. Because let's be honest, go. that's not something you want to risk. I mean, you want to make sure that your drinking water, your well water is good and safe. You bet, you bet. We don't recommend drinking the water until you know it's safe. Um, and people who have uh, 
immunocompromised issues, you know, or cuts and lesions shouldn't even shower in it until they know it's safe. One other area is that you have been talking about uh, the fact that the Illinois uh, Public Health Department is also offering free water testing kits. There's a little bit of an expense there, but, but tell me why that is handy and how you go about doing that. Uh, we have uh, kits available. You can stop in and pick them up. Um, it's, it's a timely issue. Uh, we have to ship the, uh, the, uh, the sample to the state labs. Uh, the labs waive their fee for testing the water for bacteria. And then um, we do have to charge a fee for shipping. So it's a $10 expense to get a uh, peace of mind to know you're drinking safe water. Um, and uh, usually we ask that the samples be brought in um, Monday, Tuesday, or Wednesday right. because that's, it takes a day to get shipped and okay. then uh, they have to run the tests and somebody has to be there to read the tests. So they're not going to be working on Saturdays in the lab. So, and also we have to get them there in a timely manner. So if you can get them into us in the afternoon, uh, take the sample in the afternoon and bring it in because it has to make it to the lab within 30 hours. And that, so it gets to the lab within 30 hours. How quickly do you get the results back? It's within the week and actually we've been getting some pretty fast results uh, a few days, uh, maybe three or four days. Are there any concerns that the health department has because, I mean, sometimes floods come and they go. This one's going to last a while. I mean, we're thinking it's going to last until early May before the Mississippi gets back in its banks. Yeah, um, keeping people drinking safe water is the uh, biggest priority and, you know, making sure they're not out playing in the water when, you know, you got so many contaminants in it right now. So it's a health and safety issue going on right now. Um, other than that, uh, floodwaters bring out floodwater mosquitoes and for the most part, those are a nuisance. Um, but as uh, as people are traveling more, we're getting more and more uh, disease-carrying mosquitoes in our country. Um, so you have the potential, um, you know, maybe not right now, but you know, the health department is watching for the Zika, the dengue fever, and the, you know, the other uh, uh, mosquito-carried uh, uh, diseases to come in. So take me from that point forward. I mean, you're worried about mosquitoes right now. Can you get any indication of whether or not this is going to be a tougher season because we're going to have some more standing water than perhaps we're used to? Um, no. I mean, mm -hmm. we know that uh, floodwater mosquitoes are going to come out when we have flooding, mm -hmm. but they tend to be more active in warmer weather. Um, the mosquitoes that carry West, Vi West Nile virus uh, they, they tend to be active, you know, in warmer weather, but the virus ramps up as the weather gets warmer and drier. So hot and dry is great weather for West Nile virus. So we're not there yet. Right, but let's be honest, whenever you have a spring flooding season, the chances of summer flooding are increased only because there's just so much water mm -hmm. volume out there already. It doesn't take much for the river to rise again. So that is going to be a concern, I would think, come this summer, is that you're gonna have the greater chance of, of, yeah. of more stagnant water, more ponding water, and more flood waters throughout our area. Potentially, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We talk about the flood when it's happening, but of course, as we we're saying, the water is going to go away. But then you've got all those contaminants in the soil, in the parks, along people's backyards, along the river banks. Does that cause a particular concern that you have as well? As, as the flood waters go away, you feel like you're safer and it's like, well, wait a second. No, Some of that you're stuff's not, still there. You're not safer uh, because a lot of these uh, viruses and bacteria can survive outside the body uh, for months. Um, I know when we've had uh, septic issues in, um, in various uh, households uh, with children or dogs and that we make sure they put lime down mm -hmm. on the ground and that will help denature the, the, the bacteria. Well, we're not going to be putting lime down all along the river there. So uh, people who live in these flood areas need to know that uh, the soil 
uh, can hold these viruses, uh, these bacteria, for a long time. Because I know that uh, at Leclerc Park, they always seem to have a solvent that they use to try to clean the park in, in Davenport because okay. it is such an important public space. Not every place is going to be seeing that, and so no. what, what, what do you do come this summer? I mean, people, you know, people are attracted to the water, of course. People just need to be educated and know what they're getting into, you know, and, and don't go in the water when they, they shouldn't be, you know, if they have the open cuts and that, and take precautions. Because this is going to be a tougher year as far as yeah. the rivers are concerned. I thought, well, I was also interested in, when you issued your advisory uh, in regards to the, uh, the health effects of the floodwaters in the Quad City area, you also mentioned that you're a little worried about air quality as well because of the floodwaters, and I didn't quite understand that. I mean, I, I just immediately think, don't touch the water but why would it be impacting the air? Well if you're getting floodwaters in your house um, mold starts developing within two days um, so you know you may have water in your house for several days and so now you have to worry about mold in your house and if you're starting to tear um, boards out and mm -hmm. walls out now you're looking at possible asbestos and uh, lead and so the EPA has a number of good uh, literature out. Um, we recommend people get on the website and uh, read that, know what they're getting into before they start uh, tearing their house apart, trying to get it cleaned up. Um, call a professional, ask questions. Um, if they're going to do it themselves, make sure they're protected. Uh, we recommend uh, the, the N95 particulate mask or the HEPA, HEPA mask. And uh, if you're thinking you have asbestos in the house, uh, research that and make sure that uh, that's going to, what type of uh, uh, protective breathing device you're going to need for these, these issues. Because this flood is carrying more than, than you think. And as you said, then you start having mold issues. And if you start tearing apart the house, you got a whole lot of other issues as well. Um, it, it, you, you pointed out that there are areas to look as far as getting more information. Is, is the health department always available? I mean, do you have like a specific, hey, you got a flood, this is what you do? We do. We have a, a website and you can go on the, the, the different icons and follow up with uh, uh, flooding information, uh, water sampling information, and that uh, often leads you to uh, the CDC or the uh, EPA uh, websites that have uh, more detailed information. Because you want to make sure they get good information as well. We do. We want people to know what they're getting into. And it's families. I mean, you talk about kids, but I I'm sure that you're mostly concerned about the people that are perhaps a little more frail, the people, as you said, that have pre-existing health issues mm -hmm. or even the smallest of children. Exactly. We want to make sure they know how to protect themselves, Sherry keep Doom. themselves safe. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a tough spring so far. We're going to get it through is. it, right? It is. Absolutely. With the uh, Rock Island County Health Department. In a moment, Niabi's newest residence. We'll see what's new at the zoo. But first, Laura Adams joins us with Out and About. This is Out and About for April 15th through 21st. Be in the audience for Rain, a tribute to the Beatles at the Tax Slayer Center on April 24th. WQPT has a limited number of tickets in Section 104, available for your pledge of $125. You'll receive two tickets and enjoy the sounds of the Beatles as only Rain can present. Join an Earth Day celebration at the Freight House Farmer's Market April 20th starting at 9 a.m. There's activities for the whole family. Or register for the 10th annual Donna Phillips 5K Run Dog Walk on April 13th in Macomb. Join the Niabi Zoo for Brunch with the Bunny, a fully catered brunch, and meet the Easter Bunny in the Spring Meadow on the 21st. The Professional Women's Network of the Sauk Valley Chamber is hosting a Lunch and Learn on April 17th. Women in Retirement, Living Longer, and Financially Stronger. Or delve into George Orwell's dystopian novel 1984 in three Blackhawk College seminars this April held at the BHC Outreach Center in East Moline. There's still time to catch the Louis Comfort Tiffany Treasures from the Dry House Collection at the Figgy Art Museum. Plus, Recycle the Runway is being held at the River Center April 18th to support Dress for Success Quad Cities. And don't miss the laugh out loud story of family, friendship, love, and romance in a fresh musical that's guaranteed to delight as Circa 21 presents Grumpy Old Men. For more information, visit WQPT.org. 
Thank you, Laura. David G. Smith splits his time between the cities and Nashville, recording original works, performing throughout the area as well. We caught up with him when he played a set of his own originals at the Black Box Theater in downtown Moline. Here's David G. Smith with Give Your Love Away. so happy, can you tell us why? She thought a moment and then replied. She said, kids, I'll do the best I can to say this so you'll understand. Happiness becomes a gift you receive when you do this, she said. Give your love away, give your love away, go back to you, she said. Give your love away Give your love away You do the man yeah. Now all of us have grown And we have kids of our own Mom told us we tell them Give your love away, give your love away, and we'll come back to you, she said. Give your love away, give your love away, and we'll come back to you. Yeah, yeah, give it, give it away. I know. She lived by what she said. Keep it simple, make it clean. Give your love away and look back, and you will come back. Give your love away, give your love away, and we'll come back to you. She said, Give your love away, give your love away, and we'll come back. David G. Smith with Give Your Love Away, performed on the stage at downtown Moline's Black Box Theater. It's been a long, hard winter, but now Coal Valley's Niobe Zoo is literally ready to spring to life. And joining us is Niobe Zoo Director Lee Jackson. Thanks so much for joining us. It's good to be here. D is this a special time of the year for Niobe Zoo? I mean, you're just waiting for people to show up. Especially after the winter that we had. <laughs> this is really, we're anxious to get the season started and get visitors back. Tell me about the challenges of the winter for the animals, because um, I, I would think, you think of the zoo being open only from April to October or into December, but you guys have to be a 24 hour, seven day a week operation. It's interesting, a lot of people think that we send all of our animals to Florida in the winter when we close, but no, everything stays on site. Uh, some of our animals are moved to winter holding, but uh, we have furnaces and heaters to keep track of, and we have people, our full staff there, taking care of them throughout the winter. Can you tell, I mean, because we have cabin fever, I would think some of these animals have them as well. I think, yes, absolutely. Uh, a lot of our animals that are moving out now are really anxious to get back out and see the sun and, and spend some time in the fresh air. You got opening week in, weekend, of course, at Niabi, and that's when you know the, the burst of people come out. Um, and I know you like them coming out all throughout the year, of course, but oh, yes. what, is, is it a special time when, when you have the big crowds arrive? Uh, yeah, it's really exciting for us. I mean, we love seeing the crowds. We love seeing the kids and the parents out there. 
And uh, yeah, it's really exciting for everyone. It's just sort of a grand opening all over again. Yeah, it, well, you get yeah. to show off the new house, so to speak, every exactly, year. Exactly, yeah. Tell me about the new babies. Well, uh, we have a baby colobus monkey, a young male named Katavi, who was born in December. We're really excited about him. Why is he so <laughs> special? Well, um, he's part of a uh, nationwide species survival plan for that species. So it's a managed breeding program. Actually, I said nationwide, it's actually an international program. Uh, so this is part of uh, a way that zoos work together to assure that species are around in the future. Uh, and if ever need be, um, infants or animals from this population could be sent back to the wild if, if possible. But, but a birth is a special thing. A birth is always a special thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So how critically important are the first couple months or the first couple weeks? Because what, was it December? It was December. It's very important because they're very social animals. So they need time to find their place within the group. They need time to uh, learn how to be monkeys. And as humans uh, do when they're very small, uh, they have to spend time around their siblings, around their uh, parents to kind of learn the rules of what it's like to be a monkey and how to uh, interact in the rest of the group. So how does the caretaking take place then? I mean, I would think there's special care for a baby. And I wonder, I mean, is there just one person assigned? Do you know what I mean? Is, is there some kind of a trust issue between the, the person as well as the, uh, the animal? Well, the parents do all the work. Uh, we don't have a keeper who, we don't pull the animal to do bottle raising or anything right. like that, unless there's an emergency, unless there's something wrong. Uh, fortunately, this was a, a perfect uh, birth. It was a, a great experience. The parents are doing a great job. And in the Culibus society, uh, they have a thing called aunting. So other females help mm. take care of the baby as well, and that's all gone well. So they pass the baby around and they introduce the rest of the group to the baby, and that's gone very well. So the most part is just a monitoring position exactly. for you guys, yeah, exactly. which is the way you want it to be. Yes, that's the, that's the best case scenario. Yeah, I would yeah. think so. You also have two new African primates. One's a swamp monkey? Yes, we have. Uh... <laughs> you know, I, I love that sound. It's swamp monkey, OK. Alan Swamp Monkey. <laughs> and a Wolf's Gwenin, okay. and that's a new exhibit. Uh, the first phase of that new exhibit, we have the ribbon cutting on uh, April 17th. Uh, we also have an outdoor component to that exhibit that will open later in the season. You have to be proud of the primate uh, exhibit that you have so far. Oh, very much so. We're really happy with this new exhibit, and I think uh, a lot of, or all of our visitors will, will really enjoy it as well. Okay, as long as I love the names of some of these animals, you have New Guinea singing dogs as well. Those are really great little animals. <laughs> they look like a small domestic dog. They're from New Guinea, the highland areas of New Guinea. It's a breed that's been associated with humans. I, I'd hate to say they were domesticated breed, but they've been associated with humans for about 20,000 years. Um, there's still some question as whether or not they're a, truly a different species of canid, uh, but they have been around longer than our domestic dogs have been. They have different behaviors, they have different vocalizations, and they have uh, different uh, reproductive strategies as well. So it's a good chance they're a different species that's been associated with humans for a very long time in New Guinea. And one of the things that people may not realize, and I was surprised when I saw uh, some of the information about Niamh Zoo, is that you think of a couple of animals that are out there, you have 200 different species of animals that over, reside at Niamh Zoo. Over 600 individual specimens, yes. And that collection is growing all the time. So that, I mean, how does that compare to perhaps other zoos? I mean, that's a pretty impressive gallery of animals. For a zoo our size, we have quite a collection. And as I said, we have plans to add more species uh, throughout this summer and moving forward in, uh, coming years. Uh, we've been working on our master plan, which we'll unveil later this fall that we're very excited about, and you'll see lots of new things that we have on the horizon. Is there an, any particular species area that you want to either augment or introduce that's new to Niabi? Uh, we have no particular group of animals. Uh, we're just kind of going across the board. We've reviewed our entire existing collection, and looking forward, we have a collection plan moving forward that uh, pairs with our uh, master plan. So as we build new exhibits, we kind of have a, a road map to travel. And like I said, it's going to be very exciting. We've got some really cool things down the pipe. It kind of dovetails into the fact that in so many different ways, in order for you to continue doing these 
uh, expansions or, or even the upkeep that you have right now, it's so important to have the support of the public and you have membership drives that go on throughout. I mean, you love your members, especially the members yeah. get a special uh, treat uh, uh, for the Easter weekend. But I mean, there's, there's a, 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 a special, like, special what, discounts? There's a, a number of good things that happen if you become a member. There's special discounts. We've uh, instituted a new speakers program, which uh, our anniversary for that was uh, just a couple of months ago, our first year of running that program. It's been very, very successful. We've brought in speakers from as far away as Zimbabwe, uh, Paraguay, uh, different parts of the U.S., uh, researchers and scientists to talk about the work they're doing in the field with animals all over the world. And that's a, a plus. It's open to the general public, but our members get a special discounted uh, ticket to come hear those people speak. Because the key to Niobe is education, is it not? Exactly. Yeah. And, and eye-opening. I mean, it's not just so much you learn more about a certain type of monkey, but the fact that you know that these animals exist and need the protection that they get. That they exist and that they and their environments are so intimately connected and how important that is. We can't look at any of these animals as just something that stands alone. The environment that they live in is critical to what they are and their survival. Of course, opening weekend is the big weekend, but come down anytime to Niobe, right? Anytime. We'd love to see you. Lee Jackson is the Niobe Zoo Director. Thanks so much for joining us. Have a good year, and we hope your turnout's going to be great as well. Thank you. So thank you so much. WQPT is doing its part to support the military men and women in the cities who are serving our nation. We call it embracing the military. How'd you like to see Michael W. Smith's tour when he stops in the cities? The Leisure Travel Office is offering discounted tickets to the April 19th concert at the Tax Layer Center in his Together for the First Time Ever Tour. You can contact the uh, Leisure Travel Office to book your seats. On the air, on the radio, on the web, and on your mobile device, thanks for taking some time to join us as we talk about the issues on the cities.